A warm welcome. I hope you're well and had a blessed week. Today, I'm going to share with you a very important psychological concept that will help you to strengthen your habits with less effort and avoiding accumulating stress. Because as we strive to keep our habits and rituals, we use a lot of brain energy, especially initially. And many times we fall into this mistake and we strive for them. We push to only get disappointed later when we're not sticking with them. And that also takes energy from our energetic reserves and can lead to chronic stress, can lead to burnout, erode our immunity, which then fuels chronic condition, etc. And today I'll share with you one of the way God gifted us, God gifted our brain, because there is a brain resource that we have which helps us more than we give it credit to. And will help you to think about creating and sustaining your habits in different ways. And next week, I'll bring part two with how to implement this. So stay tuned for that. And I have a mini course that only takes a couple of hours to complete and implement, which I describe my entire process with eight steps, how to create your habits and your rituals using this God-given resource in an easy way and you will have access to it for a limited time for a huge discount. So stay tuned. Make sure you check next week's episode. This way, as you get ready for the holidays, you'll have some time to pause and think and create and implement this easy-to-create ritual and routine and habit for the new year and get ready. So, And if you're a regular, I want to welcome you back. And if you're new, I'm Dr. Iwana Popa from Team for the Soul, and I'm so passionate about helping Christian women to thrive in Christ and grow psychologically and spiritually using science, psychology, spiritual care, and ancient Christian faith to move from stress and loss and grief to, and burnout to thriving and peace and joy. That peace that surpasses all our understanding and energy and patience towards thriving and fulfilling your highest potential. So with that, let's dive in. So here are some common phenomena. You might be driving and you don't even think about the way or the exits that you need to take, right? And all of a sudden, you notice the sign that you have to take an exit and you take it, especially if it's a familiar path without thinking. And before you even realize, you're home already. It's almost like, you know, that expression that the car is driving home by now. That's because of something that I'm going to unpack today. Here's another example. You're home and you have to do some laundry. You know, you might need to answer some emails, do some cleaning. And as you walk around the house, you see the laundry basket and you start the laundry machine. And then as you pass your computer, you might remember to send emails. And then the buzz from the laundry machine comes in and then, oh, I have to change and put in the dryer and put the new load. And as you pass through the kitchen, you might start remembering, oh, I need to do the meal prep and start planning for it. And you take out all the ingredients out. So many times this pattern as we're going through our day, and sometimes it feels scattered, it's frowned upon this particular way of being because it's labeled as it can lead to disorganization and multitasking. And we need to stay focused. We need to stay focused. Absolutely. There's a point to that. But The issue with this kind of mindset and labeling this as not helpful is because we don't stop to think about it. Why are we doing this? Why did God create our brain in such a way that we pick up all these cues from the environment and we respond to them? And how can we actually use it in a purposeful way to set our habits with ease? And yes, this is a God-given ability for our brain. And yes, we can put it to good work without having to label ourselves in a negative way. Because listen, if you are someone who's already organized and you got your habits all the time and new seasons come in and you're fine, great, congratulations. But most of us, we create and we have our rituals and our habits and then seasons are changing and all of a sudden it's difficult how to sustain them how to go back on them our conditions are different so this is many times as mentioned frown upon but it does have a hidden god-giving gift so i want to unpack this for you 
in cognitive neuroscience, there's this discovery that we have almost like two minds in our brain, which they have their own neural network. In other words, they have different pathways in our brain and they work in the same way. If you loved physics when you were young, you know, we have the serial circuits when the electricity moves from point A to point B to point C, etc. But we also have a parallel electrical circuit where from one point it's spread out in several directions and then they all come at the end. This is how our brain works. In parallel, we have serial circuits, but also we have parallel circuits. So this concept is called dual processing brain. We have a fast brain and a slow brain. And you might have heard me talk about this because it's such a cool concept that we can tap into it. And I use it in all my programs. So the fast conscious brain is the one that we're usually aware of. We're conscious of our thoughts, the stories that we tell to ourselves, our task at hand. It's logical, it's fast, it's cause and effect. Many times scientists talked about it. This is housed in the left part of our brain, in the left hemisphere. In the same time, we have a subconscious or unconscious brain that works in parallel. This part is slow. It's a slow mind, slow brain, but it's more intuitive. It's connecting more to our inner world, but also to the environment, to the triggers in our environment. And many times when we talk about habit formation, we talk about using our fast brain, our left hemisphere. But there is also a lot of beauty and ease that can come through befriending and taming our right side of the brain, our slow subconscious brain, because when this part is it's slow. It gets it a bit, it takes time. But once it gets it, whoa, it's so amazing. And this is why many of us as Christian women are both so good at multitasking because that part of our brain is developed. And especially as we have to take care of work and vocation and family and our kids and neighbors and church community, it really helps. But of course, like anything good in the world, it can also have its pitfalls. So we're learning here how to use this power of the slow brain of our subconscious to build the habits. And does it take some time to do that? Yes, absolutely. But not as long as one might think. Many times we have habits that we haven't been able to shift or change for years. And we're thinking, oh, it's going to take so long, so much effort. Why even try? Sometimes we even get discouraged. But in psychology, we talk about that we're building habits in three to four weeks. And yes, this is possible, but it is done as we engage our subconscious, this slow part of our brain. So it's not just through striving, because when we do it only through striving, through the fast brain, we're just going to push our will to do it. We're just going to strive. It actually can increase chronic stress and can increase to slow eroding of our energies, and they can lead to burnout. And I want to mention, for some people, striving works. But most likely, if you're listening to this, and you're drawn to my message, and you're a Christian woman, professional, taking care of your family, or work, and church, and vocation, all of that, you're pulled in many directions. And you want to do it with joy, but it can feel so draining, because of all the activities that you have to do. So trying to put one more habit on your to-do list. It's tiresome only to think about it. So what can you do instead? You can actually set up cues in your environment in such a way to remind you of your habit. And I will share this next week more how to do that and what's the science, the psychological science behind it. Next week, I'll also offer that ability to sign up for my course where I go through all the eight steps to create this habit with ease before the new year. So this way you can use the power of your slow subconscious brain to design and will help you to avoid stress and creating easier rituals. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to try to do them all at once because that can take a lot of energy. So what I'm always recommending and suggesting is to pick up one ritual and habit per one month or two. You know yourself, you know, don't go too excited and go too fast and try to do too many habits in the same time because that can take a lot of energy. 
And then you might feel like you're holding too many plates in the air and I don't want that for you. So here's a tip for this week. And I want you to do, so you can move into that direction. I want you to do a quick brainstorm. This is it, a quick brainstorm. It can take only 10 minutes. What is one habit, one habit that you could do even for 10 minutes that could change your day, your outlook, your perspective? So think about it. What's one habit that's so important? And this might actually require you to spend 10 minutes just to do a brainstorming, like a brain dump, just write all the things that you want to change and then read and then kind of look through that. Okay, what are my top two or three? And once you do that, pause and just think, okay, if I get this one thing before the new year, I'll be so super happy. All right, pick one habit. And if you want to do it right now, just pause me. If you don't have time, come back. And the next step today is do one more brainstorming. What is this habit going to look if you only have five, 10 minutes that day? Like, I get it. Let's say I want to exercise. Sure, I want to go 30, 40 minutes to the gym and I want to do all these exercises that I know they're helpful for me. If I have a busy day, what are the chances that we're going to do this? Very, very slim. So I want you to pare it down and think realistically, okay, my ideal is here. I want 30, 40 minutes of exercising, but I only going to do five, 10 minutes and be purposeful. What are you going to do if you only have five, 10 minutes and write it down, settle in your mind that progress is better than perfection. And then a little bit every day is going to accumulate and it's going to be so much more helpful. And that's it for this week. So brainstorm what's that one thing that you want to change, which you might already know, The second most important thing is how to design your ritual. So if you only have a very, very busy day, you can still do it in five, 10 minutes because we cannot say no to 10 minutes, no matter what that ritual and or habit is. 10 minutes is doable, no matter how many balls in the air we're having. All right. And next week, I'll talk about how to set this up and that next psychological concept that will help you So you can use the power of the slow subconscious brain. And as mentioned, you'll have a chance to sign up and solidify this ritual for the next month with my mini course, when I'll unpack all the eight steps, how to do this. And for right now, I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to praise God because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And if I love anything about science and psychology is to discover how intelligent and clever and beautiful God is. And God also gives us the solutions to our problems. So as I'm wrapping up and I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for your family. And I'm going to bring a passage from Psalm 139. Depending on which Bible you're having, this might be number 139 or it could be a different number. So just check the adjacent Psalms in your Bible. Thank you, God, for all the Christian women that love you with all their hearts and mind and soul. And thank you for the psalmist who brought these verses today that I'm going to conclude in my prayer. You have searched me, O Lord, and you know me. You know me when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, O Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness would not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is light to you. For you created my inmost being You knit me together in my mother's womb. And I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. 
thank you for all you're doing in the world to give to others, to help in Christ so that you can fulfill your vocation. And I pray for you as you do that, you do it with peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding, with joy, with energy and patience. And until next time, I say goodbye for now. May you be blessed.